Welcome to the Neuralink Show and Tell. So we've got uh, an amazing amount of new uh, developments to share with you that I think are incredibly exciting, as well as tell you about the future of what we're planning to do here. It's uh, now this is meant to be a technical podcast, or sort of like a. We're, 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 I'm going I'm to provide an overall summary, um, and then we're going to have a number of members of the, the Neuralink team come in and give a, a deep technical overview of the various areas. So uh, yeah, so let me move forward with the, the overall summary. Now, some of the things I'm going to say are things you've, well, if you've been following Neuralink, you've already heard before. But uh, for, for a lot of people out there, they've no idea what Neuralink does. And so I will be a little bit rep repetitive of things you may already know, but that others do not. So um, the, the, overall, the overarching goal of Neuralink is to create a, uh, ultimately, a whole brain interface. So uh, a, a, a generalized input-output device that, in, in, you know, in the long term, literally could interface with uh, every aspect of your brain, and in the short term, uh, can ask, can interface with uh, any given section of, of your brain and and uh, solve a, tr a tremendous number of things that that uh, cause de debilitating issues for people. So, uh, you know. So our, our long term is I'd like I'll, I mean I'll talk a little bit about our long term goal. Uh, it's going to sound a little esoteric, but it's the it, it was actually the sort of my my prime motivation, which was you know kind of what 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 do we do about AI? Like what do we do about artificial general intelligence? Uh, if if we have digital super intelligence, that's you know, just much smarter than any human. How do we mitigate that risk um, at, a, at a species level? How do we mitigate that risk? Um, and then even in a benign scenario where the AI is uh, very, very benevolent, um, then how do we even go along for the, go along for the ride? How do we, we participate? Um, and the... I mean, the conclusion, I, the, the, the thing that, the, the biggest limitation in going along for the ride and in aligning uh, AI, I think, is the, is the, the bandwidth, the, the how quickly you can interact with the computer. So we are, we are uh, all already cyborgs in a way, in that the, your, your phone and your computer are extensions of yourself. And if you, I'm sure you found, like, if you uh, leave your phone behind, uh, you, you might end up tapping your pockets, and and it's like having missing limb syndrome. Like where you know the the phone is, it is leaving your phone behind is kind of like a missing limb at this point. You're so used to interfacing with it, you're so, so used to being a de facto cyborg. Um, but but so, so what's the limitation on on a on a phone or a, a laptop? The limitation is the the rate at which you can receive and send information, especially the, 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 the speed with which you can send information. So if you're interacting with a phone, it's limited by the speed at which you can move your thumbs uh, or the, the speed at which you can talk into your phone. This is an extremely low data rate. Um, you know, maybe it's like 10, optimistically 100 bits per second, but a computer can, can communicate at uh, you know, gigabits, ter terabits per second. So. This is the fundamental limitation that I think we need to address to mitigate the long-term risk of artificial intelligence um, and also just go along for the ride. And uh, yeah. So, it, but like I said, that's, that's, that, that's an esoteric explanation that I think uh, will ap appeal to a niche audience, um, <laughs> uh, some of whom may be here. Um, uh, but. Uh, and, and that's, a, that's a very difficult problem. So e even if we do not succeed with that problem, I think we, 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 like we are confident at this point that we will succeed at many, uh, it's, it's solving many brain injury uh, issues, spine injury issues along the way. So, um, yeah, so, anyways. <laughs> So uh, actually, we have uh, Justin Roiland in the audience. Uh, this is a hi, Justin. So 
So it's a little Rick and Morty reference here. Um, the uh, was great Rick and Morty episode about intelligence enhancement of your dog, and uh, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> so uh, anyway, I've Rick and Morty, I recommend it. <laughs> um, so for, for so you want to be able to read the signals from the brain. You want to be able to to write the signals. Uh, uh, you want to be able to ultimately do that for the entire brain, um, and then also extend that to uh, communicating t uh, to the rest of your nervous system if there's a if you have a, a, a sort of a severed spinal cord or neck. So. Uh, now this is a this this video is now 18 months old. So this is um, Pager, uh, who is playing uh, monkey mind pong. So this is a P Pager has a neural link implant in this video, um, and th the thing that's interesting is that you you can't you can't even see the the neural implant. Um, so it's the it's. We've miniaturized the neural implant to the po point where it, it matches the, the thickness of the skull that is removed. So it's essentially that it's sort of like having an Apple Watch or a Fitbit, uh, re replacing a piece of skull with like a, you know, a smartwatch, <laughs> uh, for lack of a better an, uh, analogy. Um, so. Uh, so you can see, you can really can't, it, it, he looks pretty, he's normal. But, um, and I, I think that's pretty important. If you have a Neuralink device, like I could have a Neuralink device uh, implanted right now, and you wouldn't, <laughs> you, you wouldn't even know. I mean, <laughs> hypothetically, <laughs> I, maybe one of these demos, in fact, one of these demos I will. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Anyway, so so here's here's a. I mean, first of all, like, it's kind of wild. Hey, monkeys can play pong. They're like uh, they can actually play pong if you give them a joystick. Uh, so Pedro first learned to play pong with, with a joystick. So I'm like, that was novel. And it's like I didn't know monkeys could play pong, but they can. Um, and then uh, so we first trained Pedro to play pong with a joystick. Then we took. The joystick away and have the, the neural link, and now this is he's playing telepath. It's a te tele telepathic video games essentially. Um, so what we've been doing since then is, uh, we've been on the, the very difficult journey from prototype to product, uh, and I've often said that prototypes are easy. Production is hard. Um, it's really, I'd say, a hundred to a thousand times harder to go from to go from a prototype to a device that is uh, safe, reliable, works under a wide range of circumstances, is affordable, um, and done at scale. It's it's insanely difficult. Um, I mean, there's an old saying that you know, that it's one percent inspiration, ninety-nine percent perspiration. But I think it might be ninety-nine percent, ninety-nine point nine percent perspiration. Um, you know, the best example I could give of an idea being easy but the execution being hard is going to the moon. It's uh, the idea of going to the moon, easy. Going to the moon, very hard. <laughs> so, um, and uh, we've been working hard to uh, be ready for our first human. And obviously, we want to be extremely careful uh, and certain that, that it will work well before putting a device in a human. But we're, we've submitted, I think, most of our paperwork to the FDA. And we're, we're, we think probably in about six months, we should be able to have our first neural link in a human. So. But as I said, we, 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 we do everything we possibly can to test the devices before, uh, not, even, not, not even going into a human, before even going into uh, an animal. So we do bench top testing, we do accelerated, accelerated life testing. Uh, we have uh, a fake brain simulator uh, that has the, the texture and uh, 
it's like emulating a brain, but it's sort of rubber. And uh, so any, we, we, before we would even think of putting a device in an animal, we, we do everything we possibly can with rigorous bench top, bench top testing. So we're not cavalier in putting devices into animals. Uh, we're, we're extremely careful, and uh, we, we always want the device, whenever we do the implant, uh, if it's in a she sheep or a pig or a um, monkey, to be confirmatory, um, not exploratory, so that we, like we, we've, we've, we've t done everything we possibly can with bench top testing, and, and only then would we consider putting a device in, in an animal. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll actually show you a, a, a demo later today, of, of in a few hours really, of, uh, a, a, of implanting in a brain proxy. Um, and if anyone in the audience wants to volunteer, uh, <laughs> we have the robot right there. So, let's see, and since, since the pager demo, uh, we've expanded to work with a troop of six monkeys. Uh, we've, uh, we've actually upgraded pager. Um, they do varied tasks, um, and we do everything possible to ensure that, that things are stable and rec replicable and that, things la that the device lasts for a long time uh, without degradation. So. And uh, what you're seeing there is, it looks like the matrix, but that, that's uh, actually, th th that's a real output of, of neural signals. So that w that's, that's not a simulation or a, just a screensaver or something, that those are actual neurons firing. That is one of the, what one of the readouts looks like. And um, here you can see uh, Sake, that's one of our other monkeys, uh, typing on a keyboard. But uh, now t he's, it, this is telepathic typing. So to be clear, this is the, the he's, he's not actually using a keyboard. He's moving a, a, the cursor with his mind uh, to the highlighted key. Now, now technically, um, uh, we can't can't actually spell, and uh, <laughs> so I don't want to oversell this thing. Uh, because that's uh, that's the next version. <laughs> um, so the, uh, but the, what's really cool here is is um, Sake the monkey is moving the mouse cursor using just his mind, moving the cursor around to the highlighted key, and then spelling out what we uh, you know, what we want what we want to spell. But um, and then uh, so so this this is uh, something that could be used. For somebody who's who's say uh, uh, quadriplegic or tetraplegic uh, human, um, even before we make the the, the spinal cord stuff work, uh, is being able to con uh, control a mouse cursor, control a phone, um, and we we're, we're confident that you, that uh, someone who is has basically no other interface to the outside world would be able to uh, control their phone better than someone who has working hands. So, yeah. And I mentioned upgradability. Upgradability is very important because uh, our first production device will be much like an iPhone 1. And um, I'm pretty sure you would not want an iPhone 1 stuck in your head if the iPhone 14 is available. Um, so it's going to be... It's, um, being able to demonstrate full reversibility and upgradability so you can re remove a device and replace it with the latest version or if, if it stopped working for any reason, um, re replace it. It's, it that's, that, that's a fundamental uh, requirement uh, for the device at Neuralink. And I should say both Saki and Page were upgraded to our la uh, latest and greatest implants. Uh, so uh, that, that's been really over a year and a half now that, that Page has had for the, for the first implant and then the upgraded implant. So this is a very good sign that it lasts for a long time with no uh, observed ill effects. I think it's also important to show that um, Sake actually likes doing the demo um, <laughs> and is not like strapped to the chair or anything. <laughs> so uh, it, it's, uh, yeah, so um, the monkeys actually enjoy 
doing the demos because they and, and they get the banana smoothie and it's kind of a fun game. So, um, oh, we, I, I guess smart to make is like we care a great deal about animal wel <laughs> welfare, <laughs> and um, and uh, I, I'm pretty sure we, like our monkeys are pretty happy, you know. So as you can see, pretty qu a quick decision maker on the fruit front. So. So for our f the, the, the first two applications we're going to aim for in humans um, are restoring uh, vision. And uh, the, the, I think this is like notable in that even if someone has never had vision ever, like they were born blind, uh, we're, we believe they can, they, they can, we can still restore vision. Um, so uh, because the, the visual part of the, the visual part of the cortex is still, still there. Um, so uh, yeah, even, even if they've never seen before, uh, we're, we're confident that they, they, could, they could see. Um, and then the, uh, the other application being in the motor cortex, uh, where we would initially enable someone who uh, has no ability, to, almost no ability to operate their, their muscles, you know, sort of like a sort of Stephen Hawking type situation and um, enable them to operate their phone faster than someone who has ha working hands. Um, but then even, obviously even better than that would be to bridge the connection. Um, so uh, take, take the, out the signals from the motor cortex and um, let's say somebody's got a broken neck, uh, then uh, bridging those signals to neural link devices located in the spinal cord. So. I mean, we're, we're confident there are no there are no physical limitations to enabling full body functionality. Uh, so, uh, I mean, as miraculous as it may sound, uh, we're confident that it is possible to restore full body functionality to someone who has a severed spinal cord. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, um, and then I, I want to emphasize again that the primary purpose of this update is recruiting. Um, a lot of times people think that they, you know, they, they couldn't really work at Neuralink because they don't know anything about biology or how brains work. Um, and the thing that we really want to emphasize here is that you, you don't need to, uh, because when you break down the, the skills that are needed to uh, make Neuralink work, it's actually many of the same skills that are required uh, to make a smartwatch or uh, modern phone work. So it's sort of, you know, software, uh, batteries, radios, inductive charging, um, and, uh, uh, you know, as well as things that are specific to, to us, like animal care, and clinical and regulatory matters. Um, obviously, machine learning, <laughs> that phrase is used a lot. Um, but we obviously need to interpret the signals from the brain, um, which is a biological neural net. And the best thing to interpret a biological neural, ne neural net is a digital neural net. Um, so this is, if there's one message I want to convey, it is that if you have expertise in creating advanced uh, devices like watches and phones, computers, uh, then your, your capabilities uh, would be of great use in solving uh, these important problems. Um, that's, that's, that's more than anything the message I want to convey. Uh, 